Thank you for joining in on Prophecy Snapshots. Now today, we are not talking about the millennium, but this is during the millennium. So uh, all this week, we've been talking about how the beauty of the millennium and the wonderful things in which we have to be excited for. But today we're talking about something very dark. Now right there, if you remember back at the Battle of Armageddon, uh, God took the devil, the Antichrist, because he becomes the, 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 the Antichrist halfway through the tribulation. He takes a false prophet and he casts them and throws them into the pit of hell. Well, the Bible says he locks them up for a thousand years on purpose. Okay, then at the end of the thousand years, he permits the devil out. Now, there, there's a reason for this. This is known as the final revolt. Now, let's read a little bit about it. Right near the end of the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 20, verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, me, there's an expiration. This beauty of being on this honeymoon with Jesus on the earth after the marriage supper of the Lamb in heaven, right before we come to the battle of Armageddon, you know how the groom takes the bride away for a honeymoon. We come to the earth for a 1,000-year honeymoon with Jesus, but there's an end. There's a date which is going to come to an end. So when it expires, the devil, Satan, shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations. Let's go on down here to verse 9. And then they went up on the breadth of the earth. Now, who is they? Those who he deceived. We're talking about the kingdom kids, not us. The kingdom kids. A group of them, mass amount of them, decide. We don't know what, how many, but we're millions, maybe hundreds of millions. Go with him. And they go up on the breadth of the earth, a place on the earth, and they, uh, and, and they can pass all around the camp of the saints, ready to take us out. Now, this is really, really sad. This is really hard to grasp that something like this could take place. So, here it is. Get the idea. Every human being must make their own decision. Because people say, Pastor Mike, please explain to me, why does God let the devil out of his prison? Well, let's say I got a question for you. You explain to me why he got away with what he did in the Garden of Eden in the first place, and then I'll explain to you why he gets out of hell a second time. All I know is this basic principle. When the devil was in heaven with all the other angels, and they were angels, that they are not robots. The day came in which God let them make their choice. Remember, it's choice, not chance, that determines destiny. Well, they made their choice. One third of all the angels said, well, if we have a choice, we're not following you. And they rebelled and they became demonic angels, demons, and they were cast out of heaven. Okay, then Adam and Eve were placed into the garden and beautiful, gorgeous, and we say, well, you know, God gave us the perfect world. I would follow him. Well, the chance came that they could rebel against God, and they did. And that's why sin came upon mankind. Well, now we go in the millennium. Now, remember, we're secure as believers that were raptured in our resurrected bodies. But the kingdom kids, they now have to make their decision. So, finally, after maybe billions. It's going, to, it's going to be billions. Who knows how many? Because remember, they don't die. And so here they are. They, the devil's let out of his prison one more time. And he's permitted to come on the earth and tell the people, you don't have to follow him anymore. Follow me. Okay, they know all about this. And multitudes join up with the devil to try to take God and Jesus and the saints down. Now, this story is pretty involved in what happens. You don't want to miss this tomorrow. It's really fascinating. So tomorrow I'm going to talk about how he does it. But there's something else here I, I just want to share with you. Look, look with me over here in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. He said, beloved, he goes, don't be ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Okay, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Everything's promised is all going to come to pass. And as some men count slackness, but his long suffering to usward, he doesn't want any to perish, but all should come unto repentance. Okay, so God wants everybody in heaven, but man just turns his back upon God. Every man is given an opportunity, but man still turn, decides to say no. But also notice here, one day in heaven to God is a thousand years to us on the earth. Okay, so I want you to follow this. From the Garden of Eden 
till now of what we can see in the Bible has been roughly close to 6,000 years. Now, I know we got people say, I believe in evolution. You can believe what you want. But when you go back through the Bible, there's no proof of any of that stuff. It's about 6,000 years. Okay, so when Jesus comes back at the Battle of Armageddon, and we're here for 1,000 years, how many years does that make? That makes a total of 7,000 years. Okay, remember, God created the world. He worked six days. Okay, then on the seventh day, he rested. Okay, so we have 6,000 years. The Battle of Armageddon takes place, and millennium begins. Now we rest on the seventh day because 1,000 years, one day to God. Okay, that's our honeymoon. Time goes very quickly with God's people and in heaven and with the Lord. And so it's very interesting how all this comes together. But listen, what I want to tell you is this. One, one day, and this is individual, you will stand before God. One day, I will stand before God. And you want to be sure you're making your life count for eternity. <music>